One of the things by qaddama, to send forward, it refers to the good deeds that you do, or the bad deeds that you do. Qaddama could be the good deeds that you do, and the bad deeds that you do. What does it mean? Why didn't Allah suggest they do them? He said they send them forward. You know nowadays you send an email, you hit send, can you get it back? No, it's gone. Words. Like when you're writing a letter, you can change your words. But when you're speaking to someone, once you've said it, can you take it back? It's too late. It's gone. It's been sent. And even now we understand this much better. Somebody explained this a hundred years ago, probably couldn't have used the email example, right? But now Allah has made it easier for us to even understand how do you send something forward? <laughs> how do you forward something literally? <laughs> Subhanallah. Every time we do something, every time we say something, every act that we do, good or bad, it has now been sent Mailed, FedEx, delivered for processing. It's been sent forward. Now, the means of delivery, what's the means of delivery when an action is sent? Like nowadays, we have technology computers, or we have FedEx, or we have the United States Postal Service. What is Allah's means of first of all, getting this stuff recorded, and then getting it delivered? So we'll, later on in the surah, we'll see the angels who write. How, did, how this is sent forward. The mechanism by which this is sent forward. That's coming up in the same surah. Right? So, alimat nafsu ma qaddamat wa akharat. So, th- this is the first thing. What a person does good is sent forward. What a person that does, what bad he does is also sent forward. Now, the other thing is akharat. What was left behind? This is this is very powerful too. There were opportunities to do good things that you didn't take. There was a, you had to wake up for salah. You should have come to the masjid. You should not. You know. You you should have given sadaqah when they were having that fundraiser. When they were asking for help. So when these opportunities of good come, and the person does not take them, he left that opportunity behind. Also, there were opportunities to sin, to do something bad. And this person, he had the opportunity to do the wrong thing, but he left it behind, he didn't touch it. He left it behind. So this is an example of what he left behind. So, قَدَّمَتْ wa Every person will know very well, what are the things that they sent forward? What are the things that they have to now show for themselves? Ahdarat from the previous surah. What are the things that they left behind? And some of the things that we left behind, we'll, we, will, we will be sorry that we left them behind. And some of the things that we left behind, we'll say, I'm so happy I left that behind. Right? I'm so happy I left that behind. So in Quran, we'll find a passage of, you know, in kana li, you know, qareen. I used to have a friend back in the day. Right? And I'm so happy I didn't stay friends with you, man. <laughs> so he'll look over and he'll look at the guy in the hellfire and he'll say, I found my promise to be true. What about you? You having a good time down there? Right? And he's gonna say, I'm so happy. You almost got me too. In Kutta, in, in Kittalat al-Din. Almost you turned me back too, man. You almost messed me up. So there are some things we left behind that we will be happy about. There are some things we left behind that we will regret. May Allah make us of those who are pleased over the things we left. And please are the things that we send forward for our, uh, our own sakes. So, other ways that this has been interpreted is in connection with the previous surah. What did we send, what, what a person sent forward, of course the khitab, the address is similar to the previous surah, so we can acknowledge that the address primarily is to, to the disbeliever. And what were, were some of the crimes of the disbeliever highlighted in the previous surah? Yeah, I mean, the killing of the baby girl, remember? So now, there the suhuf, the scrolls were opened. Here what's being told is reminded, when you did that, that was sent forward. Even if nobody else saw it, Allah saw it and it was sent forward. Now it's coming back to haunt you. Now, another way this has been interpreted, what was sent forward and what was left behind is, what the, the first things you did in life and the last things you did in life. Taqdeem and ta'khir, that which comes early, that which comes later. Meaning your complete history, a complete biographical analysis of your life. So maybe in the early times of your life, you were good. And later on in your life, you changed from being good and you kind of got rusty and you stopped, you know, your commitment withered away from deen. The other is true too. Maybe you were a party animal at some point in your life. And then something changed and later on in your life, you became more and more righteous. So, ma qaddamat wa akhrat. Some of the ulama comment that this is even scarier for those who are old in age and only turn to Allah when they realize that one foot is in the grave. And they have to think back how much of their youth did they waste doing certain other things. And now they've turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَا قَدَّمَتْ وَأَخَّرَتْ Then another final way in, this which, in which this is uh, uh, understood, which is very powerful, is the things you do have been sent forward. And you will also be sent forward, you will be gone too. But the consequences of what you did, 
the impact of what you did. If you helped in the building of a masjid, you sent something forward that's good for you. You're gone. You've gone too. But then, are people will people benefit even after you're gone, for generations and generations and generations? And on the other hand, if you you know decided you know the liquor store is a good business, and you got into it, and you fed your children that haram money, and then you your son inherited that store, and there then the haram income continued and continued and continued, and whose whose neck is that on? Subhanallah, right? The, you don't just do the thing; it leaves consequences behind. So ma qaddamat wa akharat. Such a powerful, such a small thing, and how powerful this phrase. And it comes in correlation with you will really acknowledge, you will really appreciate what you have done, what you've sent forward, and what you've left behind when these things start happening. What you, you know, so from the very beginning, way the sama unfatra, when the sky is torn open, and when the fall, when the stars start falling apart. And when the graves are top, you know, top seats are either manipulated and turned over and people are retrieved, at this point you're, oh my God, what have I sent forward? What have I left behind? Right? Then you will realize. And these ayat are, rem- you know, in the previous, the conclusion, towards the conclusion, in huwa illa dhikru lil alamin, it's a really beautiful thing in the Quran. We are reminded of the akhirah. But there's a, there's a, an oxymoron here. When you remind someone, it's usually of something in the past. It's a memory that you remind someone of. We are being reminded of something we haven't seen yet. To for our own benefit, we are being taken to the future, being told this is coming. You're being warned now, as though it's it's becoming almost a memory for us. Subhanallah. Look at the psychological impact of these words, so that now you can take benefit of what knowledge, what what is coming ahead of you. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us of those who take advantage of the reminder. Of course, this is the jawab al-shart. عَلِمَتْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ وَأَخَّرَتْ What that means is, when you look at every ayah before it, you place this ayah in front of it. In other words, إِذَا السَّمَاءٌ فَطَرَتْ When the sky is torn open, عَلِمَتْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ وَأَخَّرَتْ Every person knew what they sent forward, what they left behind. Then, وَإِذَا الْكَوَاكِبُ انْتَثَرَتْ When the stars collapse and they fall apart, every person will realize what they sent forward and what they left behind. Then the next ayah, وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ فُجِّرَتْ When the oceans explode and the water is going everywhere, it leaves its place, every person will realize what they sent forward and what they left behind. And then Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَإِذَا الْقُبُورُ بُعْثِرَتْ When the graves are, are, are turned over, and the people are dr- pulled out of them to stand, every person will realize what they sent forward and what they left behind. So this is the power of the Qur'an's you know, uh, few words, but how, how they nail a message into one's one's mind, the audience's mind, subhanAllah. Now, uh, next inshaAllah ta'ala, يَا أَيُّهَا الْإِنسَانِ مَا غَرَّكَ بِرَبِّكَ الْكَرِيمِ In the previous surah, we had a question. In this surah, we also have a question. The question in the previous surah was, فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَوُونَ Where are you going? Now there's a, now that question gets even more graphic, and more stunning, and more embarrassing. It, it makes the human being, if they have an ounce of decency, to probe deep into themselves. Look at these words. Ya ayyuhal insan. Oh human being. You you know, and it's not it's very difficult to communicate what Ya ayyuhal insan says in English or any other language. It's just something unique to the Arabic language. It's very hard to do. There's such an emotion in it. There's so much warning in it. There's so much pain in it. There's pain in it. You know when you feel sorry for someone, you say, Oh man, what happened to you? Right? Allah t- turns to each and every human being and he's telling them. Ya ayyuhal insan. You know, you ever been like, uh, when you, when you are going the wrong way, and somebody's not yelling at you, but for your own sake, they are sad for you? They're saddened for you? They'll, you know, so, and the, the tone they use with you, subhanallah, this is the sadness. Allah Azza wa Jalla, another place says, Ya hasratan ala al-ibad. Oh, what a calamity over people. What, you know, what a loss. So Allah says, Ya ayyuhal insan. Even the word used for us is insan. And insan comes from, it's arguable from, from multiple roots. One of them is nasiya, the one who forgot. Right? The insan is the creature that forgets. The sun doesn't forget that it has to be in obedience to Allah. The ant doesn't forget. The rock doesn't forget. The, the cattle doesn't forget. But ulaika kal an'am balhum adal, or even far. They forget. They forget. So we forgot what, what purpose we were put on this earth for. And Allah Azza wa Jal uses that name that reminds us of our forgetfulness. Also, it, you know, uh, some argue that it comes from uns, which is like to have affection. 
So we develop affection for things other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it makes us forget our real purpose in life. The two are connected. Ya ayyuhal insan. Ma gharraka bi rabbikal kareem. A raw translation would yield what deluded you? What manipulated you? What conned you? There are different words for deception in the Quran. Just to name a few, there's gharra, khada'a, right? Khana, like khiyana. Khadala, khatara. There are different kinds of words used for deception in the Quran. The specific one used here is gharra. Gharra. Now what is, what does gharra specifically mean? It's when you take someone who's careless, like a tourist, and you con them to get something out of them. They're not really watchful about what they're doing and how they're spending and how they're behaving. Then somebody could come and take advantage of them.